The motor's blown, but it's still running. It's blowing, maybe? I don't know. It's wrecking. Something bad in there. So we're really, really hoping we're going to make it the three minutes down the road to get there. So we're out uh, Walmart shopping, getting a few things. We're almost out of water. We're grabbing that. Uh, some suitcases, some bags. If we're going to leave the motor home behind, we're going to have to put our things in something else. We're still gearing up to get rid of the motorhome. If we can find someone that'll buy it off us, we will. Um, at the same time, waiting for a price on a motor. So while in Walmart, ran into some Christians. I love it when that happens. Uh, he's actually minister of the First Baptist Church here locally. And um, they have a spot for a motorhome at the church. Concrete pad and uh, water and sewer. So if it's okay to drive there, it's not that far from where we are, that might give us a few more days of comfort because uh, yeah, we're gonna run out of water in there and, and sewage in there. So, and we're probably gonna go to church there tomorrow too. I thought that'd be nice. It's within walking distance of where we are now. Uh, his son, or son-in-law, I forget, is also a mechanic. And it sounds like he's gonna come out and just take a listen, see what he thinks of the motor. You never know, maybe it's something simple. It could be, right? But it isn't. Uh, I don't think it is, but you never know. So, walking back now, it is pretty warm here. At least there's a breeze though and uh, we picked up a few things we're gonna go back do that also the Ford dealership we're right beside I talked to them they know somebody that might be interested in purchasing the vehicle probably not because of its age but you can always ask and also looking into what it would take to put a motor in it so uh, and then I have another mechanic he's looking into a price he'll get back to me on Monday with a price and that'll we'll make our decisions from there we uh, as we've said we're planning on traveling to Europe so we may end up doing that just sooner. The trouble is figuring out what to do with the motorhome. Do we fix it first? Because selling it the way it is probably is not worth a lot. Do we put more money in fixing it? We're talking five to 10,000 US to get a motor job done. Um, you know, just getting the motor and putting it in. Like, that's what a rough ballpark I've been told. So that's a big ballpark, of course. We'll know for sure on Monday. Um, but throwing that into the old girl and hoping nothing else breaks or just cutting our losses. It doesn't owe us a whole lot at this point. Oh, that's quite the breeze. It doesn't owe us a whole lot at this point. So, you know, we bought it for a pretty good price. We haven't put a whole lot into it yet and we've used it for three or four months. We've been living in it now, uh, a little over a month just here in the States. So, yeah, that's kind of what we're tossing up still. We're not really, you know, upset about it or nothing. It, it, is, it just is what it is. Actually, we're, so we're handling it pretty good. And um, yeah, we'll just see what happens. See what the Lord brings. Um, yeah, don't know what else I can tell you. I think that's about it. So we've generously been offered a spot at church. It's pretty awesome that they have a spot. So we ran into a pastor and his wife of a local church. They're three minutes down driving. Uh, there's a spot there for our RV that we could park, have sewage, water, and hydro. Um, and the only reason I found that out is because I mentioned about going to church there tomorrow when I ran into them. I'm like, hey, maybe we'll walk there to church, right? And uh, I says, as long as you guys don't mind if we're not showered, because you know, we're running low on water. He says, well, we got a spot for your RV there. Like, what? So, motor's blown, but it's still running. It's blowing, maybe? I don't know. It's wrecking. Something bad in there. So we're really, really hoping we're going to make it the three minutes down the road to get there. Uh, everybody's telling me, listen, it's already broke now. You need a motor anyway, it's not going to make it any worse other than the fact you might put a rod through somewhere and then all your oil is gone and then that's it, you're not moving any farther. So we're hoping for the best. Uh, we'll say a little prayer before we go and um, if all goes well, we'll at least make it that far. Then we're a little bit more comfortable as a family and gives us a few more days to figure out what to do next. Alright, we are in the laneway. That is the church. Now you can hear that awful ruckus. I'll put it outside here in a minute. It'd be really cool if it wasn't if it wasn't the motor. Um, I'm pretty sure it is. We've got a couple of mechanics that are going to take a look at it. You never know. But um, yeah, thankfully, uh, it looks like we're going to make it. We're over here on the north side of the church. Take I'm the not next sure left to stay on Leslie, then continue straight. There's supposed to be a parking spot, so I'm going to put you guys away. All right, we made it here. I'm uh, I'm just always humbled by how God knows what we need and uh and supplies it you know 
I, I kind of figure like a holiday thing is a it's almost like a selfish thing why would God help in that right so here our motorhome blows and we randomly run into this preacher and I happened to hear them talking about raising children and spirituality and I was like hey it's a godly man and uh, and then because we had so many kids they're like hey this guy knows what we're talking about due to the conversation so we talked a little bit anyway one thing leads to another and here we are uh, here's a concrete pad with a sewer hookup right here a water hookup right there or not water that's hydro and water is at the church not very far away from what I understand it is beautiful view and we're among godly people and that's uh, that's humbling I don't uh, well, I don't I don't admit to getting emotional but it makes me emotional so although it doesn't fix our motorhome it's still we got a place to crash now for a few days as a father in a home I'm, I'm responsible for looking after all these folks and you know making sure we're comfortable and you get pretty warm in a motorhome so to have this now where we can plug in and it takes that load off and we can figure out the next step of the game it's pretty good god is good so the view from our new place of living this is what we could tell is the north side of the church seems like and he told us we're supposed to park on the north side but i can't find anywhere here it was on the south side of the church where i found hydro and a concrete pad so i'm not sure the is that coyotes yeah. Fox, yeah, I bet you it's foxes. Beautiful. In any case, still humbled. Beautiful. I got the motorhome parked, and uh, yeah, we're here. What are you thinking? I think you're I not gonna make it to. Um, you're not gonna make it to uh, Doug and Stacy's. No, I think I'm gonna take a nap. <laughs> Sleep good tonight with the AC running. Maybe. Worship with these folks tomorrow. You know what? I read on their thing. It's uh, it's uh, conservative music. Like it's. Uh, I think it's still old hymns. That's my guess. That's cool. And I really like the old hymns. Yeah, I don't mind a little bit of guitar and stuff. It's like background, but I find a lot of churches now it's not background anymore. It's wham, bam, and just it's loud. You can hardly hear the people. Uh, I like to hear a congregation sing, glorifying God with their voices. And a lot of these churches, not all, but a lot of these newer churches, it's so loud you can hardly hear the guy beside you sing. All you hear is the what I call a rock concert going on on stage. Somebody screaming into a microphone and banging away on the drums. I don't know. It's just not my cup of tea. And some people like it. Obviously, I know a lot of people that like it. But uh, I like collective worship. With To be able to hear a congregation, you know, making a joyful noise to the Lord is amazing. So hopefully that's what we have here tomorrow. We'll see. evening now uh, really refreshed it's so nice to have both air conditioning going it's actually cold in there now not too bad out I here just either actually turned it so it's a little bit warmer in the back so the kids oh I don't... actually shut the I shut the air conditioning off in the back oh, yeah. just now I just turned on the fan oh, but yeah. anyway we're just still so grateful we uh, spent you know well we always try to pray for our meals I guess and uh, just spend some time there thanking God too for uh, just this it's amazing it's like the best campground ever. Yeah. <laughs> There's so, like nobody around. It's quiet. I don't remember what I said or didn't say. I guess you'll have to edit whatever. I don't want to repeat myself, but uh, just amazing. Meeting the pastor and his wife. Uh, nothing happens by accident. So that was pretty cool. And coming here, uh, having this spot available. I guess there used to be a, uh, what do you say again? Like a trader home or something that used to sit here at one point. They got rid of that. and But they just left the hydro and the, and the, um, the sewage here. So we literally have... We got everything we need here. The lad showed up. The minister's uh, son-in-law, I think it was, uh, brought garden hoses from town. Said if we need anything else, so we got them hooked up to the church here, we're running around through here, so so that we have uh, running water right now. We can all take showers. Um, he said he just lives just down the road. If we need anything else, just call him. He'd be glad to help us out, give us a ride, or pick something up, whatever we need. So yeah, just blown away by that. How does that happen? Like we're in New Mexico. This is <laughs> how many hours? 20, 26 hours 26 from hours our home from or our former home in Ontario. 
Oh, more than that. 26 hours was from that other camp. Yeah. yeah. So like 30 something hours from our former home. And, uh, and you run into people like this and God's family knows no limits. Uh, it, it, it's just, it's amazing. Trust in him. And I don't do that enough. I honestly don't. No, we don't. I forget to do it a lot and I lean on my own understanding and my own, um, you know, expertise or money or whatever it might be. And when you get those opportunities to trust, it's amazing what, what can happen. Beautiful calm evening. A deer actually came out here while we were having supper and wandered out here. And it's just so calm out there. It's beautiful. I think those are the same things that were crossing the road. We think so. There's another one here. I think somebody called them Mormon beetles, didn't they? They grew in the bay out here. Nasty looking. Good news, we're told there's rattlesnakes here. So don't roll around in the grass. <laughs> uh, most of it's short grass, but the long grass you might want to watch out for. So thought we would take a stroll. We used to do this sometimes, once in a while. Haven't done it in a while, but it's just a nice sunset. So quiet here. We were just discussing if this was actually a road or a laneway. And I think this is, uh, or Anissa is saying she thinks this is the road. Because it looks like there's a few other houses behind us as well. Just look how stunning that is. You can see for miles, I was just, we were admiring that formation of clouds there. Anyway, it doesn't look very clear, but it's beautiful. Absolutely marvelous. You know what? I'm not lying when I say this. I'm not making this up or trying to cheer myself up. I feel blessed. I really do. My motorhome just probably blew up and it's probably <laughs> scrapped now, but I feel blessed. I feel, Absolutely. I don't know, I feel peace. Something's good. Life is good. God is good. And he's near. And I don't know what it is about bad times. It's like when you're down, sometimes you can feel God more. Or maybe that's just a mindset. I don't know. But I feel good. You feel good? Yeah, it's very peaceful here. Yes, it is. Yeah, very much so. Maybe we'll stay here for a couple of weeks. I don't know if they want to see us in their backyard that long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. But yeah, I feel good. We were just discussing this opportunity. You know, maybe there's somebody in this area that needs a home. And maybe they would be really blessed by our half-working motorhome. <laughs> because uh, it's a fully functioning house. It just doesn't have a, a motor right now. So, or maybe somebody is in need of one and has enough money maybe to put the motor in, but not the rest. Or, I don't know. I'm not sure. We're just tossing it around financially. It, uh, you know, kind of sucks to give it up, but at the same time, if that's what we're called to do, then that's what we're going to do. Life is good. I feel blessed. You go talk them. Okay, yeah, it's like a moth or something. Uh, it's a little, it's a grasshopper. This thing scared me when I was walking. Is it a grasshopper? <laughs> So, we are not into insects, by the way. <laughs> Some of our kids are. That's a moth. Scary, man. There you go. Ah. What? Oh, oh, you stink. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my heart just went up quite a few beats. <laughs> I do not like it. I like, I admire insects from a distance, but I do not like them on me. I can handle uh, like a housefly. That's about my limit. Caught behind the Venetian blinds I had to reach for the city lines and This ain't where I belong Hey, look at me, man, what I've been